Hey everybody, Mark here. Today I'm going to be doing a deep dive on all the little details of the airspeed indicator in the different airplanes that you might fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator. The airspeed indicator is obviously there to tell you what airspeed you're flying at any given moment, but there's actually a whole lot more information available on the airspeed indicator on the instrument panel, and I'm going to go over all of those details in this video. I'm going to cover what all of the different colored arcs are for and what they mean and what the different airspeeds within those arcs mean for you and your flight. I'm also going to explain the purple trend indicator and finally I'll also go over the v-speed references which you can make appear in the instrument panel. Let's get straight into it. The most obvious feature of the airspeed indicator is that it shows you the airspeed that you're flying at any given moment right in the middle of the instrument gauge. You'll notice that as you accelerate in the background of the airspeed indicator, there are going to be different bands or arcs of different colors that are going to appear. Each arc tells you something different about the airspeed that you're flying and what you can expect from your airplane at that airspeed. The red arc at the bottom of the airspeed indicator tells you the airspeed at which the airplane won't be able to fly. If you end up in the red arc, you're going to end up dropping out of the sky if you're already in the air, and if you're on the ground and you try and get in the air before that, you won't be able to either. After the red arc, you're going to get to the white arc, which is the flaps operating range. The bottom part of the white arc where it meets the red arc is the speed at which the plane is going to stall with full flaps extended. You never want to get that low when you're flying because you are dangerously close to falling out of the sky. Although you can operate the flaps anywhere within the white area of the airspeed indicator, how much flaps you can extend at any given moment in time is going to be different per airplane and for each flap setting. So you'll want to look those up for the airplane that you're flying to know how much flaps you can put out based on what airspeed you're flying. The green arc which comes after the white arc represents the normal operating speeds of the airplane. Once you get into the green arc, you want to make sure that you have the flaps fully retracted to avoid damage to the plane. As you continue to accelerate to cruise speed, you're going to see a yellow arc appear near the top end of the airspeed indicator. You can cruise within the yellow arc as well, but you should be cautious about doing turns or altitude changes at that speed. You should also only fly in the yellow area in smooth air, so avoid turbulence, strong winds, wind shears. You really don't want to be flying at those air speeds with those types of conditions because it's going to be a lot more difficult on the airplane. Just beyond the yellow arc, you're going to see there is a red and white striped area, which represents the airspeed that you should never exceed and is beyond the operating speed of your airplane. Odds are though, unless you're in a very steep descent or you're doing aerobatics, you probably won't get up that fast anyways. You really have to have the conditions to be perfect to fly in cruise at that high of an airspeed. Another feature of the airspeed indicator is the purple trend indicator. It's a bit hard to see on the right there, but it's giving you an indication of where your airspeed is going based on the way the airplane is configured at the moment. In this situation, I drop the power down to idle to make it easier to see the indicator in the video. And you can see it's predicting where my airspeed is going to end up if I leave the airplane configured as is. As I start to bring the power back, you can see the trend indicator starts to stabilize and it has a pretty good idea of where my final airspeed is going to end up. This feature can be pretty useful if you're doing an approach and you need to get down to a certain airspeed and you adjust your power. You can have a pretty good idea of where you're going to end up just based on your power setting change. I'm back on the ground now and I'm going to show you how to display different reference speeds that you might find useful to have on the airspeed indicator. Notably, you can enable the glide speed, the rotation speed, your VX and your VY speeds from the timer ref menu at the bottom of the primary flight display. Glide speed is the airspeed that's going to allow you to travel the greatest distance without engine power. VR is the airspeed that you would rotate or pull back on the stick to take off. VX is the airspeed that gives you the best climb angle for the airplane. And VY is the airspeed that gives you the best rate of climb for the airplane. I've made a previous video explaining the differences between VX and VY. I'll put a link to it so you can go watch it if you'd like. Enabling the airspeeds is as simple as pressing the button on the top of the knob, scrolling down with the outer knob to the airspeed that you want to enable, and then using the inner knob to turn it to on. 
It has default settings that are already set, as you can see, and those are the recommended values. I generally leave them as is. Obviously, you might want to adjust those if you're making weight changes to the airplane, as those will definitely have an impact on all of these airspeeds. I've enabled VR, VX, and VY so that as I start accelerating down the runway, we're going to see the airspeeds appear on the airspeed indicator. The first one is obviously going to be VR, which is the airspeed that I'm going to pull back on the stick. VX would be the airspeed if I was doing a short field takeoff that I would use. In this case, I'm going to continue accelerating towards VY. And once I get to VY and I want to hold VY, all I've got to do is just keep adjusting my pitch to keep the Y lined up with where the airspeed indicator is showing my current airspeed. Having the airspeeds display there is pretty useful, especially in an airplane that you're not really familiar with or that you don't know the numbers by heart. But if you start flying an airplane a lot, like I fly the Cessna 208 a lot, I know these airspeeds off the top of my head, so I don't really enable them. It's really when I'm flying an airplane that I'm not familiar with that I'm going to turn it on. The second to last thing I want to talk about is the different kinds of airspeeds that you should be aware of when you're flying around in the sim. The airspeed indicator is showing something called indicated airspeed, which is what's calculated from the plane's onboard PITO system. It's the airspeed that you're going to reference in the airplane to make airspeed changes. And if you have a request by ATC to either fly at a given airspeed, those are assumed to be indicated airspeed at all times. True airspeed, on the other hand, is the speed of the aircraft relative to the air that you're flying through. Air pressure decreases as you go higher, and that means that less air is going to enter the pitot tube and reach the pitot system, and that's going to result in a higher true airspeed than indicated airspeed. In other words, the higher you fly, the bigger the difference between indicated airspeed and true airspeed is going to get. You can see your true airspeed at the bottom of the airspeed indicator where it says TAS, which obviously stands for true airspeed, and the numbers right next to it. You can see that as I'm continuing to climb here that that gap is indeed widening. Finally, there's also something called ground speed, which is the speed you're traveling relative to the ground. Basically what it is, is it's true airspeed adjusted for wind. You can see the ground speed on these displays on the right hand display where it says GS, which stands for ground speed, and there's a little number right next to it again. To make it a little bit more obvious what the different air speeds are, what I've done is I've set myself to have a tailwind of 10 knots at the moment. You can see my airspeed is around 120-ish knots, and my true airspeed at this higher altitude is 138 knots. So there's about a 10 to 15 knot difference there. Then if I have a look at the ground speed, it says I'm traveling at around 159 knots. That number is actually a lot wider than I would have expected. I expect it to be a lot closer to 150 since my true airspeed is 140 and I've got a direct tailwind of 10 knots. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Maybe there's a bug or there's something else going on that I'm not quite seeing. I think you get the general idea though. The indicated airspeed is always going to be lower than the true airspeed, especially the higher up you go. The ground speed, on the other hand, is always going to be either higher or lower than the true airspeed, depending on if you've got a headwind or a tailwind. Although true airspeed and ground speed are nice to have, they're not absolutely necessary. Obviously, they're going to impact how long it takes you to get to your destination, but other than that, you don't really need to reference them all that often. Finally, a word on the steam gauge version of the airspeed indicator. It's similar in some ways, but it lacks a lot of the advanced features of the G1000's airspeed indicator. Obviously, you can see the different colored arcs, but there's not going to be a speed trend indicator since that would require a more advanced computer on board to calculate that different airspeed and indicate it in an analog gauge. You can see the different colored arcs pretty well, and those are going to be exactly the same as they are in the G1000. However, there is no speed trend indicator like there is in the G1000. That would require a more advanced computer and you'd need to find a kind of innovative way to display it anyways in an analog gauge. Similarly, you can't really see the reference speeds since it's not a digital display, you can't just turn things on and off. And on top of that, you can't see the true airspeed nor the ground speed. You would have to calculate those yourself, which is obviously still doable if you have to. But again, you're not going to be using those airspeeds all that often when you're flying.
The only other thing of note for the airspeed indicator in the traditional gauges is that you'll notice on the inside of the gauge, there's another set of numbers that's changing as I'm accelerating. It's not indicated on the gauge, but what that actually is, is miles per hour. The main gauge is showing in knots, but if you want to have a quick look and see how fast you're traveling in miles per hour, you can quickly see it within the gauge. All right, that wraps up all of the little details of the airspeed indicator. If you got some value out of this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.